good, you're here. Welcome to the Masterminding Success Podcast. They say if you want to be successful in business and in life, then surround yourself with successful people. So pull up a seat. The Mastermind is about to begin. Hey, glad you could join us for another episode of the Masterminding Success Podcast. We're your hosts, Keith Wheeler. And Nuria Corby. And what are we talking about today, Nuria? Today is another very interesting topic, and it's finding the perfect niche. Have you ever found the perfect niche, Keith? <laughs> I'm, I'm is still there looking. such a thing? I'm still looking. I'm still looking. Um, yeah, no, it's. I, I, I don't really think there is, quote, the perfect niche. Um, I, I think there are uh, some things that you can do to better your chances of success by finding um, a, a perfect niche for you, a good niche for you, you know, something that that resonates with you that you can be successful in. I do think that everybody, I think there's a niche for everybody. You know, there's, there's a niche that, um, that you can do better than I can and, and vice versa. I, I think that with, um, the, the two biggest problems that people have when they're just starting out, it, either they don't look for a niche at all. You know, they just, they, they want to create something for everybody which we all know that if you create something for everybody, then you're creating it for nobody. There's no, you're not standing out at all. Um, but I think the other thing is they're looking for that perfect niche. They're looking for the one that's going to make them that unicorn. That's going to, you know, they're going to go from zero to, you know, you know, $20,000 a month in, you know, in just one book, you know, and, and to be honest, do those niches exist? Maybe, but if they have, I haven't found one. Um, now I obviously have niches that, that do better than others, but as far as like the perfect niche that just you publish a book and, you know, the, the gates open and, and everybody in that niche buys it, uh, I've yet to find that niche. What about um, you? I, I totally agree because I think that people are too, too fixed on niches, really. They, they kind of think that you can only succeed if you find a niche that produces uh, a lot of sales and and that is wrong because there's there's more than one way to to make sales or to to be successful with amazon kdp and one is obviously to to stumble across a niche that works well for you and and i still think that different niches work for different people mm -hmm. just because a niche that i'm really successful in works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for somebody else. And, and I'll tell you in a minute why I think that is as well. But there's different ways of, of finding success. And and yes, finding a good niche is, is one way, but you can find smaller niches that aren't all that great. And just because you have several books that sell regularly, that can bring you success as well. And it's not necessarily to do with, with the niches as such. It's to do with the books being of good quality, people buying them, leaving good reviews and recommending them and then buying more of your books. And that's why right. I keep saying branding is important. You know, if they get to know one of your books, the chances are that they'll buy other books of yours with the uh -huh. same pen name. So, so yeah, there is different ways. Um, and what you said earlier about there's a niche for everyone. I think that is a really good way to put it because, um, I think I would say the best niche for each person is a niche that you know something about. You right. know, if you're good at something, make that your niche because you know what people are going to want from that book. Right. You know, so if you if you we all we've all started like this. We've all started by looking on Amazon, seeing what books are selling, and then thinking, "Oh, I can make that book. I'll make a book like that." And then we end up making ten log books, <laughs> right, right. all different type of, you know, blood pressure log book, um, hmm. diabetes log book. It's the typical sort of thing that that everybody makes. And I'm not saying you can't be successful with that, but it's very hard to be successful mm -hmm. with something like that because it's very likely not something that you've got experience in. If you're going to make a, um, a, I don't know, a blood pressure logbook and your blood pressure is fine and you've never really had problems with your blood pressure, you're not going to be the best person to make that type of book because right. you are not going to know what you need to put in that book to make it really special for someone or to make it really useful for someone you can learn about it and that's the other way you can do it you can research your niches learn everything you you can learn about it and then you know you can still make a really good book that way 
but I think um, the niches where I've been most successful in are things that I know about right. and where I've said to myself, oh, I like this book on Amazon, but if, if that was for me, I would make it like this or I would add this take away that yeah and i think that's that's the best way to do it really you know find something you're interested in yeah i agree i agree because there are things in in you know really comes back to what you were saying about you know something that that resonates with you something that you're familiar with because you're able to add little things in there that may not necessarily be needed or necessary but when the user sees it is like yes You know, the, you know, and so, I mean, I can, if it's something that I have no familiarity with, I can look at all the other books that are there. I can see what they all have, jot that down. So I know what to include, look at the reviews, see what people are complaining about. I can add that in there, but still, and and I can still make a better book than what's already out there, Mm -hmm. but it's still not necessarily going to resonate as if it's something that, that I have familiarity with that I can say, but this is actually an added thing that that i think would be nice to have you know um and you can do that but if if you're not familiar with it then you're just guessing you know you you need to to have some familiarity with it and uh, a a good example for me is you know when uh when you know my daughters both my daughters when they were younger they played travel softball and so the very first uh not a low content book that i created was a, a softball journal and it, you know, it was something that kind part of it already existed. There was a part where you could like track where, you know, where the kids hit the ball and, you know, and you know what they did and everything else like that, as far as like, did they win? What was the score? That kind of stuff. But what I added in mind was a section where they can put um, memories that they made during that game. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted it to be a kind of like a dear diary for softball players because most softball players that i came in contact with um weren't really the dear diary type you know they weren't the type that would keep diaries but they but i was seeing all the memories that my daughter was making on the field and you know you know 10 years from now you may want to know how you know your best friend how you how you met them like you know little things like that and um and i did it just as something for my daughter and that's why so many times I hear people say that they made a book out of necessity and those tend to be their bestsellers because again, it's something you're familiar with, yeah. you know, it's something that, <clears throat> that you have an intimate knowledge of. And, and again, another example for with the softball niche is, is that I know that what most people call a home run in softball, they call it a dinger, you know, that little terminology like that are things that other people most likely that are just researching the niche aren't going to know exactly they're not going to find that out and no one's going to put in a comment you know in a in a review you know i wish you rep- you know i wish you referred to it as a dinger you know they're not going to say that but by putting it in there it shows that i know and and people mm-hmm. when they're using something like that they're not saying oh this person clearly knows this niche you know <laughs> they're you know they're just this is something that that they can relate to and if it's something they can relate to, not only are they more likely to buy it, but they're more likely to to trust you as a brand yeah. and buy more of your stuff. Absolutely. And like you said, I mean, they're not likely to say, oh, this person really knows this niche. They right. expect that, you know, it's, it's right. absolutely expected if you buy a book, that that book should be what you are looking for. But they will say, oh, this person doesn't know anything about yeah. this niche when when it doesn't hit the spot. Um, and I think, you know, it's it's funny because so many people ask me, like, you know, can you give me a, a really good niche as if it's like a secret or as if it's <laughs> like and it is a secret in a way because we don't want to tell people what books we publish necessarily because they end up then flooding the market with with lower quality books and even though they're maybe not as good they still take away from you i remember that um one of the books that i i made it in kdp with um which was in the uk market was a particular book that didn't have much competition and i think that's why um, I was successful with it because I managed to to get in there at the time, and I made a mistake uh, on a on a video on a past video ages ago, 
where it kind of showed the niche that it was and uh, the amount of books that came on the market and flooded it and obviously my sales tanked after that mm -hmm. and I even had people emailing me haha I know your niche <laughs> you know things yeah. like that so it's you have to be careful not to yeah. give away your niches because there are people out there that that like to see you fail and they'll do things to 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 make that happen but you know it's also not a big secret because it's really the magic ingredient if there is such a thing the magic ingredient is you and and your knowledge and what you can bring to the table in making your book so if you want to know what the secret ingredient is you know what your secret ingredient is because you are the best person to know what you're good at right. what you have knowledge about you know what is there a hobby that you've got is there something you do at work that you can make a book about is there something that happened to you is there um maybe an illness you you went through you know it's from your experience that mm -hmm you can make the type of books that really sell because because you're the best person to to talk about it and to make a book that people can identify with and that people want to buy because they want to find solutions to their problems it's about solving problems for other people or or helping them solve problems so that is the magic ingredient i think i don't think there's a a niche as such but it's what you put into that niche in any niche that, right. that is what sells your book. I I, I agree. Um, I think one one thing that I always suggest to people is um, look look in look at yourself. Look at you know, like you said, you know, the jobs that you do, jobs that you've done in the past, um, your hobbies, and you know, jot those down and and see what you know. You'd be surprised at how many different things you really know about. You know what you know what did you do in school? You know, even if you didn't finish university or college or whatever. Um, you know, what, what are things that you were interested in? Also, you know, you can extend that to friends and family, you know, you know, maybe it's not something that you know, intimately as much as something that somebody else close to you does. Uh, but I, I do think that part of finding the quote, perfect niche, um, you know, you want to look um, when it comes to narrowing down which niche to try, or especially when you're first starting out, is you do want to look at your competition. You do want to look at um, the the two big things for me are um, the the amount of competition and how are the books that are in that niche how are they selling? Um, I like I like to call you know do they do you have hungry customers? Do you have people people that are um, and you can tell that by looking at the the BSR the bestseller rank and see you know of the books that are in that niche of your competition you know. Are they, you know, ranking at 1 million or, or higher, or are they ranking, you know, super low or somewhere in between? And, you know, every, every guru is going to tell you something different as far as like what your thre threshold should be. My, my quick answer to everybody would be um, do, make the list that, that we talked about, you know, of things that you're familiar with. And, and then out of those niches, go look and see what, you know, what the competition is, uh, see what the average BSR is and pick the one that looks the best to start with. Um, you know, I'm not going to give you numeric thresholds because it's different for everybody. It's going to be different for, for someone, you know, like Nuri and I, who, who have brands, um, in, in whatever pen name we publish in, um, you know, that have been doing, we've been doing it for years. You know, we're able, you know, our threshold is different than someone who's just now starting out. And so, um, you know, it, I, I have given numbers in the past, but the truth is, is when you're just starting out, um, I, I I'm really big in, in giving people the best chances of success in this business. Um, I'm not saying, you know, a thousand dollars a month, you know, right out of the gate, but I'm saying you'd be surprised at how good that first sale feels, you know? And, uh, and, and how honestly, after a while you, you kind, you kind of, uh, forget how good that felt you know, seeing that sale come in. Um, so that's why I say I'm not even going to give a threshold. Um, I, I just say, you know, find out the best combination, the lowest competition that still has good BSRs, um, you know, le less than a hundred thousand. If you, if you need a number, I would say less than a hundred thousand average BSR. That means it's selling, um, 
like one a day or one every other day or whatever. But even that, I mean, it, 150,000, you know, maybe it's selling, you know, once every couple of weeks. If you're just starting out, that's, that's a good place to start, you know, um, just because a lot of it's going to come with, you know, just getting it done, getting it published, um, uh, you know, creating something good, getting it published and realizing that that one you just did is probably the worst one you're ever going to do. And, um, regardless of the quality you put into it, because you're going to continue to grow, you're going to continue to get better. Um, but yes, I mean, if you, if you can create something and your very first one sells even one copy, then you're way ahead of many people. Yeah. You made some really good points there. I think there are some exceptions as well, because, <laughs> Um, you mentioned like an, an, a number, hundred thousand, you know, that that's a good, a good guide. Um, but sometimes don't let a higher number stop you either, because right. um, when I made that book, I talked about my, my first book that really took off, there was a lot of competition. If I had done research, I would never have published that book. Right. And it's only because I published that book because I saw a similar book in a bookstore. And I thought, oh, I really like this. And I could make one for myself, a, an even better one. And I kind of made it for myself. And, um, you know, like I said, I mean, if I had looked at the research, I wouldn't have published it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's not about um, the the how shall I call it the the data or the the mm -hmm. numbers in research it's more about what you can bring to the table for the book what you make of that book and um and the another thing that you can think of like you know I said earlier think of prof what you do in your profession or what you do as a hobby I think another really important factor is your personality because right. some people have got a very dry humor for example they're very dry and very or some people are very sarcastic and in, in the way they express things and sometimes that is a real asset if you can put that into a book and that's why we have so many books on amazon that do really well that are quite sarcastic or quite sort of um offending almost right. <laughs> but they're funny and uh you know and, and some people are more sort of on the kind side and 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 want to embrace everyone and they make good books as well so i think your personality plays a part in your book as well and uh yeah i, I think the points you just made were perfect i think you know, it is a, a, a numbers game. You have to research everything, but it's not always just about that. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, it, to answer the question, you know, finding the perfect niche, I don't think we can find a perfect niche, but like you said at the beginning, there is a perfect niche for everyone. And it's it's finding your niche almost right. rather than the perfect niche. Right. And, and, and kind of, Touch, uh, piggybacking on what you were saying about, you know, not always looking at the data. That was one reason why I was kind of reluctant to, to give numbers. Mm -hmm. um, but because, you know, like you said, I mean, even, even if it's, you know, in the millions, that means they're, they're not selling a lot or they're, they're selling every couple of months. Yeah. Um, but again, it's still sales. And, and that doesn't mean that your book isn't what that niche is looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that, you know, yours may be the one that takes off because they the books that are out there haven't given the people what they've been looking for you know and a lot of times people don't know what they're looking for until they see it you know and so you know they 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 know what they don't like and that's why these books aren't selling so yeah so again don't be don't be deterred by by numbers um you know competition i i do suggest that's one number you can you should look at only only if you're you know you know you you want to get those the best chances of those sales right off the, at the beginning um, with, you know, because again, the, the more competitive a niche is obviously it's going to be harder for your book to be seen. Um, you know, it's like a small fish in a big pond kind of I, mentality, but, uh, but again, I, I agree. I think the biggest thing above all um, that, that we've kind of mo said multiple times during this podcast is regardless of what numbers you you see, what your competition is or whatever, um, what the the average BSR is really what works for you you know what are you the most familiar with and the most comfortable with because that's when you're going to be able to bring again your personality your knowledge um, you know not just knowledge of the topic but but little insider lingo like I talked about 
And that's really what's going to be the the perfect niche for you. Um, and and no, even then, you're probably not going to have a unicorn. You know, just being realistic, you're probably not yeah. going to to knock it out of the park. But what you're doing with that first book is you're starting your brand. You know, you're you're start now. Whether you continue your brand, that's up to you. But um, but you're starting your brand once once you get that very first book published, and 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 by that people can. You know, I, I mean, I've been doing this since 20 or 2016. So, I mean, I've been doing this over seven years now and, you know, it, it was not an overnight success, you know, um, it, it wasn't even over a couple nights. I mean, you know, it was a while, you know, one thing that you had mentioned is you said, you know, your first, your first book that, that really took off and, and I want to make sure that I resonate and I, I don't know this for fact, but I'm going to take a guess that your first book that took off is not your first book. No. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, right. And so that's something just yeah. to just to just to clarify, you know. Yeah. Um you're saying, you know, out of out of the books that you published, the very first one that re- that really like clicked. Um so just just to clarify that it, she's not saying her first book was <laughs> was a success. Oh, how um, wish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And even mine, I mean, my very first one, um, I, I didn't expect to sell any. Mm-hmm. And so it was a success to me because I I think I sold probably I, I think my first my first KDB check was uh um I don't know like twenty five bucks or something like that which was way you know I, I wasn't expecting anything I like yeah. I said I created it for my daughter so um but again I mean that's still I've done better versions of that same book um and you know made it a, you know second edition and third edition and my first one still outsells the rest you know um it's not the cleanest it's not the best looking um but it resonates the best I guess. Um, the other ones I, I tried, I, I basically kind of what you were saying, like I, I read into the data a bit too much and, and I made it, you know, I tried to make it more efficient and yeah. more, you know, um, and, and people that are using things don't care about efficiency, you yeah. know? Um, and, and I know we've talked a lot basically about no content, low content books. Um, but the same thing goes for, for written books, you know, um, obviously, you know, you're, you're putting more time into it cause you're writing it. But again, finding that perfect niche is the same thing. What are you familiar with? Um, yeah, before we talked about, you know, what, you know, what jobs you had and things like that. But, you know, what kind of what what niches do you like to read? You know, and because if you read the more you read in that niche, the more familiar you are with with some tropes and and things like that. And and not saying that you have to follow those tropes, you know, you but you can take those same tropes if you don't want to follow them and, and turn them on their head, which is a great way to really stand out yeah. in that same niche. But um but yeah, so I mean, it's it's still the same thing. It's just you know, it's just looking at a different area. But yeah, so it's still what whatever you're the most comfortable with, familiar with, and um, and, and I I find at least for myself, those are the ones I take the most enjoyment in making anyway. That you know? is so true. That is so true because what you, you know when you just said that wasn't your first book, no, it wasn't, and I did the typical log books, notebooks. Actually, I remember the very first book that I made was a budget planner for kids. <laughs> and uh, that's not an easy book to make f- as your first book, but right. it was fairly easy for me at the time. And uh, um, and I thought, yeah, this is going to be a winner. <laughs> Funny thing is, didn't sell for a long time. And now it's selling <laughs> after years. I don't know why that is, but you just never know with, with Amazon KDP what right. can happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, and we are recommending that you start with something that you know about, but there are, you know, there are so many different ways to approach this business. I still think that doing it the traditional way of like, you know, making a few notebooks first, that's not a bad idea because it does help you familiarize yourself with the process. And I think that Mm -hmm. is really important because if you're going to start with something very complicated to begin with, say you, I don't know, you, you're an expert on something and you're going to make a, a book about that. That's not going to be easy from a technical point of view because you need to learn how to format your book you need to learn how to design your book you need to learn how to you know what to write all of those things um you we don't naturally know them we don't you know we're not born with that knowledge Mm -hmm. and i think it's worth sometimes it's worth making 10 logbooks before you make that book that you really want to make just to get into the swing of things in 
you know, knowing how to upload to Amazon KDP, familiarize yourself particularly with all the, the you know, what Amazon's requirements are, because I still see people making a lot of mistakes in terms of uh, making titles that are not acceptable yeah. And, yeah. and that kind of thing. So it's, you know, it's a learning curve, whichever way you look at it. Um, so it's really important that you start with the easy stuff first. But, you know, there, there really isn't one way of doing it. There's, there's many ways you can approach it. Um, and that's the difficult part of it, because I can't recommend one particular way, because it just depends on each person, right. um, what's best yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can, I mean, this is what we basically do, uh, you know, on our channels, you know, we can make suggestions. Um, uh, our big thing is to really just kind of tell you what's out there and what, what your options are and only you can know what works best for you. Yeah. And, uh, but some people do, some people are looking for, show me what to do, tell yeah. me what to do, you know? Yeah. And, and in that case, I mean, obviously we've got videos on that too, but, mm -hmm. um, but it, it really, I think, the one thing that we could sum up this whole podcast episode on is um, going back to the whole fact. It really comes down to you as the individual, you know, what, you know, what you're familiar with, if, and, and not just what you're familiar with as a topic, but what you're comfortable with, you know, yeah. do you, are you comfortable with creating um, some log books to get familiar with the system, you know, with, with the processes and the guidelines and things like that, knowing full well that, that unless you run ads to them, they may not succeed you know, that you may not sell any, uh, you may sell a few, mm -hmm. but, um, but again, just remember that even, even though you may not be getting sales, you're getting knowledge. You're, you know, you're learning what works, what doesn't work. You're learning more efficient ways to do things, you know, and so that still will make the process easier and more efficient for you when you do create the, you know, your, the, the main book that you're, that you're thinking about doing based on your job or your hobbies or whatever. So yeah. um, if that's something you're, you're comfortable with and you're, and you're um, you go into it knowing that realistically, because there's so many log books out there, so many, you know, note, you know, journals and things like that, just know what, just, just going with realistic expectations, I guess is the best yeah. way to put it, you know, um, and, and know that that's not, you know, the, the end you're, you know, that's not your one and only product that you're going to be creating. It's, you know, it's just, it's just the beginning. And like I said, regardless of what kind of book it is, regardless of how long it takes you to create it, that's probably going to be the worst book you ever do because it's your first one, Absolutely. you know? And, and so if you get your first one out and knowing that, you know, they're not going to, you know, they might not succeed and you do get sales, it just makes it that much more enjoyable. <laughs> You know, Definitely. now I'm not saying, to, I'm not saying to put out hot garbage. I'm, you know, obviously you want to put out quality, even with your very first book, but just know that as you're doing, as you do anything, you know, you're, as you're learning, you're going to get better at it. I just don't want people to go into it expecting, you know, unrealistic expectations and then, you know, publishing one book and being done because, you know, it, it was too hard or they just don't understand it or whatever. Um, those, I mean, I've said it numerous times on this podcast, but um, I've over different episodes, but the biggest issue I've seen with people that don't succeed is they quit before they get there, you know? Absolutely. That is so true. And you're not going to be successful without making mistakes. Right. So you, you're going to have to, definitely. <laughs> I, I saw something the other day on, on Facebook where it said, how did you become so successful? And he said, um, by by doing all the right things. And then they said, well, how do you do, how do you know how to do all the right things? Oh, from experience. And how did you get the experience? By making lots of mistakes. <laughs> so, by doing you know, all the wrong things. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So you, you're going to be successful by making lots of mistakes because mm -hmm. you learn from them. Right. So don't let that put you off and, and just keep trying. I, I said that in the past as well. Just, I think the, the main difference between people who are not successful and successful is because they haven't given up. And that's what you just said as well. Yeah. That's, you know, yeah. Well, this has been another great mastermind area. Once again, a huge thank you to all our listeners and viewers who came to tag along. If you enjoyed today's mastermind, please consider following or subscribing to the podcast and maybe even leave us a review and let us know what you thought. Until next week, I'm Keith Wheeler. And I'm Nuria Corby. Have a good one. Bye-bye. 
Thanks for joining the Mastermind today. Be sure to follow the podcast on your platform of choice and tell a friend who would enjoy it too. Your support is greatly appreciated. This has been the Masterminding Success Podcast.